Hello there and welcome back to another Paint Along style episode. So the colors that we're using today are Titanium White, Burnt Umber, Alizarin Permanent, Cadmium Red, Yellow Ochre, Sap Green, Ultramarine Blue, and Ivory Black. And we're working on just a 9 by 12 cotton canvas that I pre-toned with oil paint a long time ago. So what this helps to do is it just helps to paint the grip a little bit better. Now remember the Paint Along style episodes do not not aim to produce highly realistic paintings but rather uh, these are paint along style episodes that you can either uh, just listen to while you're working in your own studio or our commissions or whatever you're working on you know just have me on the side as a little as a studio friend or as a sidekick I'll be there with you or you can paint along with me and the photo reference that will be used uh, for this uh, painting of uh, Nick will be to the top left corner uh, to the side of your screen there. So I'm starting off with Burnt Umber, okay. So Burnt Umber in a size 6 uh, Robert Simmons bristle brush. I'm just getting a kind of basic indication for where the head is going to fit. Now remember this is a longer episode so you can go ahead and uh, get out your oil paints, your crayons, your pastels, and just paint along with me. I know these episodes are a little bit longer so you know sometimes we don't have time to watch the entire thing. I do have um, you know shorter videos that are voiceover style. I've had some recommendations to do some of those videos again and I definitely will. It's just this week um, paint along is what fits with my schedule. So I'm just looking care very carefully at the outside shape of the face. And here we have the little corner for the neck, the shoulder, and back side of the head over here. Now the hair, I did a whole bunch of strange things. I was moving the hair around. So I'm just going to go ahead and unify all of this. And another thing I want to talk about with this episode in particular is uh, about the topic of likeness how to achieve a likeness of the model without copying the photograph so uh, I'll talk about it as I'm painting but remember with these paint along style episodes um, the moments that I have to be in complete focus I will be a little bit more quiet I just want to get the dimension of the head first and foremost right now and I know that I'm kind of prematurely blocking in the dark for the hair but this will fit into the um, the concepts that I'm going to introduce a little bit later the dark for the ear and you want to keep your shapes simple and easy and um, you might be able to finish my sentence now keep your shape simple and easy so that so let's see if you can finish my sentence and if you can't it's alright I usually say keep your shape simple and easy so that um, when the time comes to make changes those changes are simple and easy to manage and that's it keep things simple Now this goes all the way down here and remember the photo reference will be posted to my Facebook photo reference group so you can have access to the photo reference okay I think that's that's about good for the placement of the head uh, the dimensions are a little bit longer with uh, this portrait uh, as, at least from what I'm seeing with the photo reference so that's that's about good for the outside shape of the head. Now then, let's get into the interior shapes and as we get into the interior shapes I'll go ahead and introduce what uh, I usually do first. I'll look for the concavity of the eye socket on one side. So right around here. It also this gives me two things uh, for now, uh, this little line. Um, it gives me the center line of the head with the corner of the concavity of the eye socket. And then this little portion of that line also gives me the proportion of the, the head. So the hairline, excuse me, down to the eyebrows. 
So now I can just go walk my way over here and I can also get the angle between the eyes. So it's a little, it's a little more angular. So let's bring this down. Let's say to about there. There. Now we want to consider the third. So the thirds is the first uh, little piece of information that I will give out for the likeness. Now I have the head, the hairline a little compressed. So um, when I get back into the, uh, the shapes, I'm just using a dry brush for this. I'll just push this up a little bit. So likeness is going to be what we're going to talk about. And I know some people in the comments are going to say, you never achieved the likeness. And then I'll say, well, the point was to demonstrate the paint along and talk about the concepts of likeness. So now let's move on down here to the nose. The bottom of the nose goes right about there. Nose goes right about there. And so you want to think about the third. So from the hairline, I know I have to move it up. So from the hairline down to the eyebrow uh, is usually a third all the way down here. See, that's how it meets up with the bottom of the nose, give or take. Now that will vary. Okay, so the thirds will vary uh, based upon perspective. So right now we're actually looking down at the model a little bit. So that will alter the perspective a tiny bit. Now I'm just gonna move down to the mouth. The next third, okay, so for the mouth, just a few marks, I'm not gonna do much for that. So the next third is gonna be all the way down to the chin. See how we're just about, not quite there, but um, down to the chin. This is just a way to get towards the human range uh, with our perspective and with our shapes, nothing more. Now the next aspect of likeness, now that we have the thirds, is going to be the light and dark shapes. So right now, uh, this is actually natural lighting. Um, so this was uh, taken with uh, under natural light. Uh, so the light's actually quite drastic going down in this direction. So I know that it might be looking like uh, the glasses of a sort of a, a superhero figure, but uh, what I'm trying to do is just get just the kind of nature of the dark shape for the concavity of the eye sockets. And with the shadows, you want to fill the entire thing, all of the shadows. Okay, somewhat like that. Now I believe that this is all in half tone, so I'm not gonna worry too much about that shadow. And now after you get your flat shapes of light and shadow, the next thing you're gonna wanna look at with likeness is going to be the structures of the face and how the structures of the, of the model's face deviate from the standard head. And the standard head is going to be a construct that you must have in your own mind. So right now, I'm just mixing up a little basic flesh tone. So I'm using yellow ochre, cadmium red, and titanium white. So a little bit too much of the cadmium red. So what I'm doing is I'm mixing up a sort of base flesh tone. So a little bit of sap green to combat the heat from the cadmium red. I'm sorry that the, uh, the uh, surface here is moving around a lot, but you know, what can you do? Now a little more sap green. Now you see that these color combinations are very simple, very simple color combinations to talk about likeness. Okay, so that's about good for uh, simple basic flesh tone. So now what I'm gonna do is get a different brush. So 
different brush here. This is actually the dry brush I was using to move the hairline up. So we'll start on the nasal bone, nasion there. Now let's talk about the next concept in likeness. And remember, this is likeness in its most simplest form. Most simplest in its most simple form. Um, so you want to think about the structures of the model and how they deviate from the generic head that exists in your mind. And in my mind, the generic head is prob probably about the Julius Caesar uh, like a Greek sculpture, not saying uh, a specific Greek sculpture, um, but you've seen videos before where I would draw out the planes of the head and create a type of uh, sculpture. I probably shouldn't have said Julius Caesar. <laughs> now I'm thinking of the Caesar salad. Um, but it's usually along the lines of, uh, you know, perfect third from here to here, from here to here, from here to here. Uh, the distance between the eyes is usually the length between the eyes. What I'm doing is I'm describing the generic head in my mind uh, to you, but you can have a different type of generic head. You could even have your self portrait as a generic head. And then when you're putting down uh, the, the planes and the structures for the model's head that you're painting, or the, just the model's face, right? Uh, you can ask yourself, well, how does the model the model structures deviate from my own. So what I want you to have is a way to compare and uh, comparing those structures as you're putting them in will inevitably help you get even closer to the likeness of the model. Not saying that I might uh, achieve it with this, but you know, I'm kind of doing two things at once here. So I'm illustrating the the uh, planes that I'm looking for, painting a portrait, and explaining to you uh, what I look for in terms of likeness. So what this flesh tone does, this little base flesh tone, is it allows me to continue to draw. So this is actually a little bit more compressed than I had before. Now let's move this up. A little bit more, and um, like, like I was saying, this will help me to draw because I will see all kinds of drawing mistakes now that I have the, uh, the a light shape in place. And the trick to this is that there's no medium to the paint; it's just paint. So we want this to be really thick. We're going to be painting wet paint onto wet paint. And I'm going to have to keep reiterating this. This is not meant to be a highly realistic painting. It's not even meant to be a highly classical painting. This type of demonstration has a purpose um, more than just creating an interesting or uh, you know realistic image. This this purpose is to the purpose of this is to create something that can help you. So you can draw along with it, paint along with it. Another shadow you want to watch out for is this. I'm purposefully minimizing this shadow and I'm sure you know why. Just gotta watch out with that. Now with our model's nose, it's a little more flat than the uh, standard head uh, in my mind. Now going along the side of the maxilla here and into the cheekbone, the zygomatic bone as it moves its way all the way up to the corner of the side of the eye socket. By applying less pressure here, it's going to be a little bit darker just because there's a little less paint. And that's all. Less pressure, less pressure. Now the flesh tones are rather cool. Um, they look really blue to me. It might be the screen that I'm using. Um, I'm using a photo reference that's on a TV screen. So it appears rather blue to me. Uh, so maybe I may could have made it to a little too cold, but it's okay. What we're more concerned about is the structures 
and how our values describe those structures. Now remember with the mouth, okay, you don't want too much for the mouth in the beginning. You don't want too much, you just want enough to say to your future self, hey, the mouth may go there, but if it doesn't, uh, we're going to treat this mouth so simply that I can easily adjust it. So don't stress if it's not in the right place just yet. And with a little less pressure down here, uh, we're going to have the uh, a little indication of light here. And that should be that for the uh, basic shape of the face there. Now I'm going to get a different brush and a little bit of medium. So I'm using uh, solvent-free fluid, Gamblin solvent-free fluid, a little bit of odorless mineral spirits. Now this is obviously off camera. So a little bit of ivory black and some sap green, ultramarine blue, nothing so complicated for the background. And now what the background is going to do is it's also going to help me draw the contour. So remember that line uh, that I, I moved? I'm going to now adjust it with the background color. So th those of you that are drawing or painting along with me, you can use the background color now to help to refine your contour. Doing two things at once. We're putting in the contour and the background. Two things at once. Now this is definitely creating a likeness in the abstract. You know, if I were to see this image um, at, the, at the state it's in now, and I would compare it to, um, you know, several different models, I would probably say this is Nick, the, the model that I'm painting here, though I've only met him a few times. I met him at a, uh, in a painting group in Baltimore. Just adjusting the edge for the contour there. Now, of course, with the background, I'm not going to get too crazy with the background, just enough to differentiate the contours, and uh, I'll just leave it at that. A little bit more ivory black, ultramarine blue. Now, let's push this contour. It's a little. A little more angled this way. So are you still with me? We only had one flesh tone so far. Just one flesh tone. And the drawing color and the background color. Pretty soon we'll actually get into the interior structures of the face. A little bit of scrubby, scrubby colors for the background. And we'll throw in just a little glimpse here of the hoodie, a little bit of the ivory black. And uh, nothing more than that. Don't need to complicate this demo. Okay, all right, so now, how about you say with the same brush, we're now going to start to mix some of the values that we'll need for the interior shapes of the face. No, no extra medium just yet uh, for the, the hair or the face. So right now with the hair, putting in just a little darker indication there. And of course I have to move the ear up a little bit relative to the, uh, to the eyes. The concavity of the eye socket and that's okay. I left a little bit of room there. And you know I can even bounce back and forth uh, between brushes. So this was the brush that I used for the flesh tone. Check this out. Can just move that up and then sculpt. We're all about efficiency here. A 
little bit of a darker shape over here. And the dark of the hair is usually something I'll attack first in the Alla Prima, just so I have a range uh, between my darks. So there you go, something like that. Less pressure will make a less, um, will, will make a lighter mark. And what do you say? We start to move our way up. A little bit more cadmium red. Now note, I have now introduced a value change. Here we are 20 minutes in, and now we're finally starting to get into the value changes. So what I'm doing is, I'm adding a little bit of the cadmium red and the yellow ochre. And I recommend all artist grade paints. Now some of my students um, in my current portrait uh, painting class, uh, they're getting by pretty well with the artist grade, the, uh, sorry, the student grade. Um, but what, it, what I've noticed with some of their colors um, is that the, the student grade doesn't quite have the, uh, it doesn't maintain the integrity of the color or the pigment uh, as you mix more complicated colors. In case you're wondering the differences and the student grade, just to be more, um, I guess, precise, the student grade, what, it, what they do, what I hear that they do, is they add a little more, they add more fillers or add fillers to the uh, paint. So moving that up, see how we're drawing along with the coloring process, so to speak. Now, I'm going to go back to the background color. No need to stress over this. Pushing that edge up a little bit more. And that ought to do for the contour. Now, let's go back to this shape. And what we want to do is we want to start now to put in some of the true values and true colors for the... Uh, for the shadows, true values, true colors. Then there is a song you can sing to yourself as you're painting. Yeah, true colors. Now I'm not gonna try to sing, of course. That would destroy YouTube. So a little more of a dark here. Yes, I know. I just went into that, but that's okay. What we want is the value. Now remember the concepts for likeness Remember them, the thirds, and the structures in the black and white, and the structures of the forms of the face. Compare them to the standard head that exists in your mind. Now we're pushing the darks here, very simple. Now we're gonna go and uh, let's make it a little bit lighter but very, very little with yellow ochre. And now we're gonna to start to push this half tune up a little bit. And at the same time, the shadow. So we're putting a little bit of a half tone there, sneaking that in, and we're putting in the shadow. So a little bit of multitasking as well. We want the true color, true value. Switching back to the flesh tone brush. See how efficiently I can move by just having one flesh tone to begin with. Just one flesh tone to begin with. Moving the shape up and down. In essence, this is how you obtain likeness in the abstract. Because if we can't obtain likeness in the abstract, in this simple form, how on earth would we achieve likeness with more values, with more stuff to have to worry about? Instead, you want to keep the stuff limited, the, keep the stuff simple, and then make it appear like the model in the simple form, and then allow yourself the luxury to go in and put in more, more details, more information. 
Now I'm gonna, I'm choosing to sharpen this edge and I'm also pushing that back a little bit, just a little bit. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna move this color over to the side, preserve it, refer to it whenever necessary. And now we're gonna go ahead and mix the color value web. So a little bit of the uh, red, yellow ochre. And the reason I'm mixing the color value web now as opposed to uh, earlier on in the episode um, it was just because I, I find this a little bit easier and man more manageable to draw with. And then switching to the color value web only when it's time to do so. And what this color value web helps to do is it helps to preserve the uh, value range on your palette. Okay, so I know I'm going through these colors very quickly, uh, but the red, uh, the cadmium red, the yellow ochre, and the white really helps to attain a uh, kind of a pinkish orangey flesh tone and I'm just using a little bit of the sap green just to kind of neutralize the heat but I will move closer to the yellow ish uh, yellow sap greenish range now I know I'm talking a lot so I'll, I'll, I'll be quiet when we get into the um, the middle tones and all of that so just uh, speak a little bit about the natural light it's a little cooler using the window light, depending on the time of day. I believe this was afternoon light. It's a little bit lighter up there, and that should be about good. Okay, so now, now we'll get into the portion where I'll be a little bit more quiet. I'll be switching brushes now and then. Let's get the original drawing brush out. Put in a little half tone for the globella. So that's our first little value change. Now we'll go back to this brush, add a little bit more white. Just using all bristle brushes. Emphasize the light there. Nasy on bone. And right here for the frontal region of the skull. So a little bit more light for the frontal region of the skull. And here we'll walk our way over to the side for the superciliary arch. See how I'm putting in more light for the superciliary arch? And what this is doing is it's kind of adding more compression to the top of his forehead, giving us a little more of the, his actual structure. This is actually a much stronger feature on our model. So now we'll walk our way down to the cheekbone, zygomatic bone. It's picking up a lot more light here. Now I'm gonna have to switch to the other brush, the half tone brush. Add a little bit more red down to here. So that's our first little color change towards the cheekbone. So it's a little bit warmer there. And now we're going to relate that color change to here. This is a similar in hue, but it should be a little bit different in value. So it's going to be, uh, depending on the direction of the light, I, I believe it's going to be a little bit lighter. Dang. <laughs> made it darker. So again, see how I'm referring to the color value web. And that is for the side plane 
of the nose. And it's going to get even darker towards the wing. So I like to use larger brushes uh, when I want to cover more real estate. Smaller brushes when I want to have more control. So whenever you see me using a little tiny brush and moving about like that, it's because I'm trying to have more control of the brush stroke. But when I'm using a large brush like this, it's usually because I'm trying to move faster and cover more real estate. I'm putting in this bottom plane for the bottom of the orbicularis oris. Very quickly walking our way through these structures. And we're kind of moving it over to the side to give us the angle for the mandible. Another thing I'm noticing with this model that deviates from the standard head in my mind, the standard head in my mind, the jaw is probably about this angle. Whereas our model has a little more angular than I'm used to, like this. So that's another thing I have to pay attention to, is the angles between the features. So Michael, if you're watching um, from my uh, Patreon, I wrote your constructive critique um, yesterday or a couple days ago. Um, so remember, I also uh, do I do live streams, which I'm actually doing one tomorrow. Um, monthly live streams and live chats and uh, mentor critiques of, of my uh, patrons' artwork. And I was actually talking about the angle of the jaw in the uh, the, the uh, photo reference or the constructive critique. So here I can actually point it out to you because in the standard head, remember I wrote the standard head in my mind is like something like this, like a, a more acute angle or here, actually depending on how you're looking at it, the angle is much more subtle in my mind for the um, generic head in my mind. But the model's jaw is like this. It's just a coincidence that um, we're seeing the same scenario with a different model. Okay, so a few more little value changes here. Uh, so this is this top and side of the orbicularis. A little bit more red. Lighter value, a little more. Let's, let's use the Elizarn permanent. Not much though. For the top of the cheekbone. Top of the cheekbone, really. The bottom of the cheek cheekbone, top, move our way over. Bottom over here, how I define it at least. Okay, all right, so now we should be good to move into the smaller brushes. So with the smaller brush, I'm gonna add a little bit of mineral spirits. And what it does is the uh, thinner paint tends to stick onto the thicker paint. So you saw the color combinations I used for that little highlight. And you don't want the highlight to just be a generic dot either, so it's going to have some little sprinkles and sparkles here. And it also will describe the plane that it is resting on. Okay, so now I'll clean off the brush a little bit. So Lizarin Permanent, Ultramarine, Burnt Umber, more medium. Now we're going to look at the nostril. And now for likeness, think about how each feature deviates from the standard in your head. So the, the wing here is much smaller 
than what I'm used to. Definitely smaller than my nose. So see how I'm making these comparisons in my head? You really need to make these comparisons as you're putting in these planes. Don't just copy it. You could if you want to. But where's the fun in that? We want this to be a very active process. Don't we? So now a little darker for the upper lip. And I usually use the top middle of the upper lip. Well, something like that to start off with the placement. So after I put that down, uh, I sit back and then I ask myself, is it in the right place? And I don't think it is. I need to move it up. See how I'm optically comparing now. And for those of you that want the shorter uh, voiceover type videos, don't worry, I'll bring those back eventually. It's just right now, I'm kind of in the paint along kind of mode. And I sit back. This also helps me reassess the center line. See this little divot here? It points out the direction of the center line. Thinking of the distance from here to here. You also want to think about comparing uh, points to one another. So from here to here, it's a little bit further away than from here to here. Obviously, I'm not going to get it perfect. And I don't intend to. A little bit more sap green. More mineral spirits. The half tone underneath the lips. Remember, thinner paint tends to stick onto thicker paint. So that's the little phenomena that you're observing right now. I've had questions um, before about how am I getting the paint to stick? And that is how. I'm adjusting the thickness and thinness of the paint. A little bit more red. It's very thin. So I'm letting the paint mix with the paint that's already on the canvas a little bit. So less medium will actually allow me to blend a little bit, so to speak, with these colors. Now, of course, there's all kinds of subtlety here that I should describe, so a different brush for that. Sap green. Now we're going to take this plane by plane with less medium so that we can have softer edges. But I'm not going to stress about this too much. And I have to be careful with this structure. I overdo the um, the structures for the face. It might look a little bit generic, so I have to be cautious with that. You also want to be very cautious about not over softening things. So somewhat about like that. Now I'm going to go ahead and put a little more focus onto this structure, nasal bone.
Okay. So I just want to have a much more exacting shape for it. And you know what helps with this? Is to squint. Even though I don't have the luxury of working from life right now, I'm squinting down to try and minimize detail in the image and to see just shape. Now, of course, I'm seeing a little discrepancy with the background. To move this back a little more. Okay, so now I'm going to go and draw a little bit for the the eyes. Now I don't see much with the eyes, so I'm going to only put in what I see when I'm squinting. So when I'm squinting, I see something here. A little bit of light catching the, the lower eyelid there. And when I'm squinting, see it here too. Okay, so a little bit of black and white. And some flesh tone. So when you're a little bit cautious about, you know, you're afraid to put too much in, you can kind of just sneak up to what you're eventually going to put in. So right now I'm kind of sneaking up to this dark. Uh, there's the dark of the sclera, which is lighter than the surrounding areas. Putting a little bit less of it, like almost a quarter of it. And then I'll go back in and reassess the shapes underneath. A little bit warmer and lighter. And now we're entering into the awkward stage in the painting. So remember the awkward stage is Usually, I think something that comes up in portrait painting where it's starting to look kind of realistic, but it's still troubling. It's still unfinished. It's so unfinished that it's troubling. And that's just because we're not used to seeing unfinished faces. We're used to seeing like, I don't know, like pictures on the Vogue magazine or something. We're not used to seeing uh, incomplete images. So the way you get through the awkward stage is just to have patience. A little bit more red. But I tell you what, it's not a heavy awkward stage for me. Most of it is the light on the lower eyelid that's bothering me. I'm just kind of adjusting the shape surrounding the eye. I'm going to also have to adjust the half tone so that it makes sense. A little bit more sap green into here. I'm also missing a little bit of a darker tone under here. I 
And what do I always say? When in doubt, blur it out. So I will go back into the light on the lower eyelid and just kind of blur a little bit. But first I'm putting in the side plane of the forehead, walking my way towards the superciliary arch using a wet on wet paint application of course, but uh, I'm kind of applying thick paint onto thick paint to um, to soften a little bit. Okay, so when in doubt, blur it out. Logic is going to come into play. And this is just a dry synthetic brush. I'm gonna sit back. All right, I can live with that. I can live with that. I may have to move the uh, chin up a little bit. So we're gonna do a little bit of a chin up. So let's first emphasize this a little tad, a tad little bit more. And then I'm gonna use the half tone itself to move the chin. A little bit more, whoops. Let's switch to a different brush. I'm gonna sneak in a little more, some areas for warmth. So now there's a little more medium. So we're just kind of lightly putting a little more warmth on the chin. Not too much, however. I go back into the half tone brush. I'm gonna sit back. Now back to the background tone. I'm gonna put a little more of a tone, the shadow underneath of the neck. there. Now with this episode in particular, I'm not going to um, worry as much about um, the, f the resolve or the finish of it, uh, but rather the words that were coming out of my mouth um, in terms of the likeness. So the likeness and how to achieve a likeness, obviously I should push the likeness a little bit more on this painting, but I think you're starting to get the idea. The key word is practice. Practice as often as possible. 
And if you're timid about portrait painting, um, you know, if you've been watching and you still haven't, um, you know, created your first portrait or anything like that, my advice is to just do it. Now is the time to do things you really love to do, to do things you really want to do. I actually found that I have to move the forehead a little bit. But this technique always surprises me at how much we can do in so little time. How about we just get the palette knife? Put in that highlight with the palette knife. Now we have a sense of light there. I'll just get the uh, clean and dry synthetic. Or mostly clean, I guess. Now, with likeness, think of as much as you can about the the thirds that I was talking about. And think about the, the light and dark aspect of it, how the light and dark uh, mimics the light and dark patterns of what you're seeing from the model when you're squinting. And also think about the structures <coughs> Excuse me, and how the structures deviate from the standard model in your mind. Keep those things in your mind, but don't dwell on them. Another very important piece of advice don't dwell on them, don't stress out about it. Painting should be fun, portrait painting, even, should be fun. And I say even just because uh, most people are kind of, they kind of shy away from portraiture just because of the, the difficulty in achieving likeness. At least from what I've seen or heard and read. We're gonna use a little bit of the flesh tone color that's already on this brush for the hair. Now this is just a trick that I use because the uh, warmth of the colors for the hair will actually uh, blend in with the, uh, the kind of coolness of the burnt umber. And you wanna treat the hair with planes, so this is a light most facing plane here. In some areas there picking up more light than others. Somewhat about like that. Get that softening brush. And I think I wanna cover the background a little bit more. So mineral spirits, ivory black, sap green, a little bit of the medium, the solvent-free fluid. Now I know there's a little, um, I may not even have this portion in the photo reference, just because I usually crop uh, as much as I can so you can see more of the face. So this doesn't have anything to do 
with the photo reference. This just has to do with me wanting some variety in the background. So a little bit darker back here. Ultramarine blue, ivory black. This darker portion of the clothing. A little bit darker underneath here for the hoodie. And then black and white with some medium. And mineral spirits. Just a few little brush strokes here and there. Nothing at all complicated. We're creating the vignette. Remember the vignette is just the areas that you leave unfinished to complement the areas that are more finished. Now that I'm looking at the screen, you don't really see below this point. So I'm going to just paint down to this portion here. Just making it kind of abstract towards the bottom. We're practically done with this demonstration. I'm just filling in some little areas for the sake of composition. So something about like that ought to do. A little darker here. I'm going to stand back for a second. And that's about good. So remember, this is a paint along style episode. So I recommend, let me just soften, soften here. <laughs> I recommend that you draw or paint along with this video or that you just keep this video along and just keep me as a, as a studio friend or a studio sidekick for you. And just let this video play along on the side as you are working on your own artwork. Remember, to not dwell on the likeness, have a measuring system. So think about the thirds as you're painting. I know that I mine deviated a little bit, but that's okay. Think about the thirds, the abstract light and dark design, and how the structures of the model's face deviates from the structures in the generic head that exists in your mind. And these things alone will help you achieve a likeness without creating a perfect photographic rendition of the model. That being said, I really hope that today's episode helps you out. I wish you the best in all of your artwork, and I'll see you on the next episode. And it's now time for our new patron shout out. So thank you. Thank you so much. Whose art? Thank you so much for your support. Your support means the world to me. Thank you again so much. And remember, the first Saturday of the month is the live painting demonstration. The first Sunday of the month is the live chat. And the first Monday of the month is when I accept submissions for the mentor tier critiques. Thanks again so much, and I'll see you on the next episode.